Welcome and thank you for joining us today. If you're watching with friends or family, get up and give a high five or give them a nice big hug to greet them. And also, if you're watching by yourself, feel free to go to our social media sites and chat in with us. And would you please help us to get the word out and share, share, share so that we can get the word out to everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. super excited. We're getting ready to stand and worship our God together. Would you please join us?
Cause 
want you to leave the distractions behind and open your ears to hear and eyes to see to be available to the king this morning i want you to be available to the king plugged in abiding in the vine come on just rest in his presence right now let him speak to you as we worship him Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. It is so important that we are plugged into the vine, that we are attached. Because that's where we get our energy source. It's like he's our, he's the branch, you know, that we're plugged into the vine. That way we can produce fruit and all of that nutrient, that nutrients and all of that the the energy that he gives us and his presence and his word produces fruit in us and in our lives and to other people so that they can eat from it so it is so important that we are plugged into the father at all times every day to get a fresh word from him to read his word and hear the spirit awaken and activate it alive in you for this day. Every day you need bread to eat. Every day we need the word of God. Every day or we'll starve and we won't be healthy or nourished, but he gives us nutrition in his word. to be available to him this morning. Just feel a sense of urgency and distraction and a lot of things going on, but we need to turn our eyes and our affection and our heart to him right now and say, God, I am available. What would you like me to do today? I just want to worship you. I just want to bless you in this time. I just want to sing about you and say who you are and declare who you are, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I just want to love you. I just want to cherish you. Come on, church. I want you to sing. I want you to lift up your song. I want you to press into the vine, press into him, press into Jesus this morning and let his Holy Spirit renew you and transform you. Come on. Here I am. Here I am. You can have it all. You can have it all. Here I am. Here I am. You can have it all. You
want to take a minute to just worship Him. I just want you to lift up your own song. I just feel like we're not done yet. Just lift up your own song right now. Even if you don't know the words of this song, I just want you to press in and have the heartbeat of this song to Him. I am available when you call. I feel like the Lord is saying there's a lot of distraction and the enemy will distract you from me. If he can't do anything else, he will try to distract you from me and take you away from me and time with me and put other things before me and put idols, entertainment, sports, all kinds of things, ministry, all kinds of things, work, they will put before me. But I need people to open up their ears to hear and eyes to see me. I feel like the Father is saying that. To open up your hearts and receive Him. To have full affection. And almost like an antenna to heaven, being tuned in to that radio station. What is he saying? What is he doing? What is he speaking today? What does he need me to do today? It's our first assignment and the most important one is to open our ears when we wake up in the morning to hear the Father. What is he saying today? What does he need me to carry today? What does he need me to do today? Who does he need me to help today? I feel like he's raising up the church to be people who are servants instead of people who are just getting things that they don't even receive. It's like they're living off of other people's faith or something. He needs people to be built on their own faith and his word and by his Holy Spirit. So come on, I just feel like that is something that he is saying right now. I feel it very strongly that he needs people to wake up and listen to the Father and let him teach you and abide in him, abide in him, abide in him. So come on, I just want you to worship a little longer. I know it's a little longer than normal, but come on, I just want you to press in your own words. I'm going to let the music play, and I just want you to pray, and I want you to give it all, and I want you to just surrender to the King and say, God, I'm available. I'm available to you this morning. I'm available every day, and Lord, don't let me forget this, to remember to be available when the enemy comes to distract and take me away from you, not being plugged into the vine. I pray, Father, that you wake us up and shake us up and say, hey, you're not plugged in, get plugged in again. And so come on, church, I just want you to worship him. I want you to hear from him this morning. Let him build up your faith. Let him speak fresh revelation to you right now. Come on.
you so much, God, for your presence. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your fresh revelation this morning. Thank you for your word today of encouragement to your people to abide in you so that we can get nutrition, so that we can be healthy and strong warriors for you, God. Lord, we're just so thankful for your voice of correction. God, we're so thankful for your voice of counsel. We're so thankful for your voice of wisdom and encouragement, God. We're so thankful for you this morning, Father. And we love you so much, Jesus. We love you so much. Come on, church, tell them, I love you so much, and I thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and we say amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you've been enjoying our online services as well as the many different shows that we now have available on the live media network. Thank you for everybody who's partnered with us so far. Some of the platforms that we utilize are free, but the network itself is not. And so it is all being made possible by everybody who's choosing to give and to partner with us. So from here at Church Alive, we want to thank everybody who's done so. And if you haven't partnered with us already, if you would consider giving into the Church Alive ministry today, we have ways where you can give by phone, you can give via our website, or you can also just mail in a check and we have all the information available down below. But once again, thank you so much for everybody who's partnered with us. Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information, and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount, and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Text giving with Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. Check out what's happening this week at Church Alive and Alive Media Network. And also, follow us on all of our social media platforms. And don't forget to follow us on our website to look at all the updates in our pastor's blog that you don't want to miss out on. Remember, we have a free Alive Media Network app for you to download today. It has fun Christian entertainment shows, biblical teaching, and all of our online services. So check it out. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning from wherever you are watching this, from whatever platform you are watching this on. We say welcome. Thank you for letting us have the opportunity uh, to have access to your life and your heart and your mind. Uh, we hope that uh, God will move for you today because today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad it in and be glad in it. And so today is a great day. Thank you for joining us. We have a very special message today. This is not going to be the normal preaching uh, setup that I normally do from week to week. We actually captured one of our um, network shows um, on Thursday, and it was a show that we're still toying with the, uh, the, the title of it, but uh, I call it Off the Cuff. 
and it's all of the, uh, the pastoral team together as we discuss um, different things. And then, we, of course, we record it uh, for um, people to, to get some insight into um, kind of where we're coming from and all that. But anyway, the Spirit of the Lord, we feel like, was moving heavily in that meeting and in that show and to, enough to say, you know what? We're, we were, we're starting a new series anyway. We're going to bring that to the people to let it uh, let the people feel, uh, you know, feed on what we did. And I tell you what, I'm still eating spiritually from the food that was provided for that Thursday. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be the, the new series that we're going to do over the next few weeks is called Revive Us, and that is the theme that the Lord is bringing us is already here, but bringing us into is this great revival plan for all of us. And so I will say this, that as we were doing this meeting, as we were recording for um, this other show, all the little bitties were in the, in the living room and in our foyer, kind of running around playing with the Grammy. And so they, they, they got loud a few times. And so we apologize for, for um, well, we're, we're not apologizing for kids playing. Of course, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't expect that. But a few times that the kids were having a great time and got kind of loud, and it, in the, in the, in the, it picked it up. And so, but this is just real life, isn't it? And so, we know, I know, I know that if you're watching this this morning, that God is going to bless you. He is going to speak to you today. He's always wanting to speak to you. He is always wanting to bring the information to you. He's always wanting to elevate you, to pick you up into those places of the winning, the, the, those places of winning, because our God wins and he wins everything. And so he is inviting us to be a part of that. And so please enjoy this, this show take slash meeting we did with our staff as the beginning of part number one to revive us. Here we go. So we're going to turn it over to our pastor. He's going to get us started. Well, good evening. We hope that you are enjoying your evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Uh, this episode of Off the Cuff, I think, is number three. And what we're just sharing with, with the team is some things that we feel like God is sharing with this ministry team, uh, with myself, with each other, and kind of letting it bounce around off of each other, which is um, an awesome experience when you're surrounded by a team of uh, world-class leaders that are really sold out for the Lord, being able to share what we feel like God is uh, speaking, what He's leading us to, and to be able to be excited about being a part of what He's doing. And of course, you know, God is not a respecter of persons, so He's looking for people just like you to be a part of that team. And so tonight we're going to look at some things that um, in theme and in... Um, uh, I guess we've talked about this a little bit before throughout services, throughout some of the prophetic words, uh, some things um, we're kind of going to share uh, some of those past things that seem to be really coming up to the top right now. And that, it, it really tonight is about, uh, and what we talked about as a, as a staff is about this, this revival period of time we're coming into. 
and what does that look like and what does that not look like for our for, for this part of you know God's history with the world and so if he's bringing the world into a great revival what does that look like what is what do we feel like he's sharing um, that to look like not only just for church alive but for the global body of believers and would anybody like to just uh, add anything to that as we keep on going okay all right <clears throat> so all right uh, so this are some things that we feel like that he's sharing I think that if you uh, are on there you might have been also seeing other ministries who who have God working through other ministries and other pastors other prophetic people that are in office um, they're kind of sharing some of the same information. Why? Because it's the same Lord, the same Spirit, the same God whom we're putting our trust into. And he does not going to, like, I want these people to do a revival and these people to be doing the same, same old, same old. Now, when the Lord speaks, he normally speaks across the, the, the globe, across all of his ministries to get the, the same word out. Um, and so it's not going to be oddball what we're, what we're saying tonight. And so um, we feel like if you, we look around and if you look, if you've been, if you've had any history on any of our uh, video content or any of the stuff that we've preached, taught, or any of the classes that have been shared, you probably have heard some of this before about, um, about you know, the word revival or the new era and, and what does that mean for our you know, our existence. You know, God is in charge of the divine timeline. And His divine timeline is a lot of ways based on events, not just hours, you know. The Lord God is the one who came up with the idea of time when He created the sun and the moon to mark the seasons, uh, the sun and the, and the earth rotation to mark day and night. Um, he, he did all that for us to mark the years and seasons and stuff. For him, in a lot of ways, it's based on uh, uh, events that are coming to pass. That's why several times in Scripture, when he was talking about, let's say, for uh, Abraham and Sarah having the baby finally after 20 years, um, he said, in about, we'd basically be back in about a year. Um, it was about, you know. Uh, because you know he's making a little bit of room for human nature too, and so, but this this new revival, this new era that we're coming into as a as a body, it's it, it's not like the other ones that uh, other revivals that God has brought into the human history and the world history, because this one is specifically about the actual end time. Now. We talked as a team. I currently and other some other prophetic offices don't feel like it that we're not quite in we're not quite at the end yet. And does that mean that we get to live it up and whoop and holler and go live in all kind of debauchery and sin because oh well we got you know we have a little bit of time before Jesus' great return? The answer is no. Because as born-again believers and what we're teaching and what the Lord is trying to do is, is that He's maturing us, that we want to live for God whether He comes back tomorrow or a hundred years from now. We're going to do the same thing. How, what an honor that is for Him to develop people that were born sinful to develop us in such a way and have us be born again in this new creation. For us to be grown enough to just like, you know what, Lord, if you come back tonight, that is so wonderful. If you come back 100 years from tonight, that's so wonderful because we're still going to live for you. Our eternity has already started with him anyway. And so we're gonna, we want to uh, live for him. And that's part of maturity. And that's part of what this new era is about. It's like it's, it's more about the him. Uh, it's always supposed to have been about him, less about the... Um, I don't know the show, I guess, if that makes sense. Anybody want to jump in real quick and add anything before I keep on? Keep on. Okay. <laughs> so, um, revival is already breaking out on in, on the earth. And, and as I wrote this down early this morning and then shared it with the team, and that's the first time I've talked through it since I wrote it down this morning in a prayer time. And, and what I wrote down is revival is breaking out. It's already breaking out. 
you might be thinking that we will be seeing, you know, golden shafts of light hitting the planet or, you know, angelic hosts, you know, flying all around. And what the kind of a tagline underneath this that I, I, I'm jotting down when I'm in that vein with the Holy Spirit is, don't misunderstand what this revival is. Mm -hmm. You know, there's what it is and what it is not. And what it is, it, it's, it's not, this revival is not about reviving us for more of the same. He is bringing us into a new era because he is getting us ready for his the, the, the great triumphant return of Jesus Christ, you know. And whether we have run our course and we've died and left this planet or we're still alive when he returns, you know, you know, we're, 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 we're still, he's, he's still bringing us into a, a new place to get us ready to meet him, basically. That's what I want to get to. Um, so it's not more of the same. And if you're looking for more of the same kind of experience on earth, there is seasons in world history where he changes an entire people's culture basically overnight. And one example would be like we talked about earlier, when for 400, uh, before uh, the Hebrews were in slavery in Egypt, you know, they were living and, and moving about pretty freely. Well, when, when Joseph went down to Egypt and then the, the, all the story, we don't have time to go into all that, uh, he died and then the, 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 the Hebrews continued to increase the cost of land. And then later on, many years after Joseph died, their, their numbers were great to the point that they were outnumbering the, the people in Egypt. And so the, a new person came to power and put them in bondage at that point. And then they were still there 430 years, I think is what it was. So there was a lot of time before they got put into to bondage that they were in a new season, a new part of history where they weren't free and they weren't, you know, they were put into slave labor and they, they were crying out for God to send a deliverer. Well, along came Moses. And, you know, even when they started crying out 430 years or however long, uh, that was there, and you know, uh, you can do your scriptural research there. But the point is, how, the, how exactly how many years doesn't is not the point. The point is, is that God raised up a deliverer and 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 went to rescue these people out of a a, a long season in the world. Four hundred, you know, this United States has not even been around four hundred thirty years as a country. Now, if you go back to when they first landed on Plymouth Rock, it had been around for a long time, but, but as a nation, not even that long. Can you imagine twice that, you know? And then God finally sends a deliverer to deliver them, and through a series of events, Pharaoh finally let the people go. And overnight, things changed. God was bringing these people into a new era for them, for their, for their culture, for their, their people. And he was moving them along on the divine timeline, never to go back to the way it was before. Well, same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he is, we happen to be alive in this great day in human history. Is everything great right now as far as the systems and some of the things that some, of, some, some not so savory people are doing, are trying to do? The answer is no, just like Pharaoh and, and all of his uh, taskmasters were not being nice to the people, you know, the, the Egyptian, uh, the Hebrews before they were delivered. You know, there was a lot of stuff that was going on, but God had determined to deliver the people. And it didn't matter what the ruling ruler said, God was going to deliver his people. And so anyway, we look around in society and we see some things that are happening. And it's, it is, if you're, if you're not... If you don't have your spiritual eyes and ears on and have a heart being able to be to hear from the spirit it is there is a lot of the spirit of depression then could be easily able to, to I was gonna say consume you but the spirit of hopelessness and depression and all that kind of stuff could be easily able to infiltrate your life yeah. uh, and that's why the ministry is so important it's always been important because we got to get the true the true news from heaven, the true hope of Jesus Christ, you know, the, the, the true hope of our God. Uh, in the, so in times like this, if we did not have Christ speaking to us and showing us, if we were not open to, to anything, you know, 
Uh, we would probably, I'd probably be, I'd be just go lay in bed and stay in bed, you know. But because God is a part of our life and His ways work, and He and He shows us His good hand, and you know He has a way of protecting the godly, all the while you know saving up the the wicked for judgment, you know. Um, if we, He wouldn't be speaking to us and showing these things to share with you, I mean, how many people would be really depressed and, and, and hopeless? So this revival is not about God saying, I'm going to revive you just so you can go back to doing whatever you were doing all along that unfortunately got us into this. If the church would have been doing its job all along, then we would not have had so much infiltration of the enemy into so many walks of life. But we relegated authority that God has given to His kings and priests uh, to to be in to be to be the authority, and uh, and we and we didn't do the job, and now He's not allowing us to go back to the way it was because however long we have left, it's got to be a foundation uh, that's going to survive. There is going to come a time in the future that He will not intercede again, but hopefully that'll be after the great end time. Um, revival, and then he's gonna he's gonna allow. You know, we've read the Revelation, we've read the tribulation, we've read all that. At some point, he is not going to intercede until the actual very end. Mm -hmm. And seven years tribulation, we can see in our society how fast things could roll. Seven yeah. years to overthrow the entire earth and bring everything, everybody into submission and start executing people that didn't agree with with the uh, the Antichrist. We could, it could easily come very quickly, can it? Yeah. I mean, look how fast. I mean, if some uh, some of the reporters that were caught up in some of the Antifa riots were trying to run and get out of there, one of the guys said he knew if they caught him, they would kill him. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, we know that if the Lord would be protecting us, there would there are people in our society that would have no problem hanging us up on the gallow easily to get us out of the way. Uh, same people that don't mind executing little babies you know, have no problem with it, a grown-up. Not, not one. Not one problem. And so anybody want to share um, as we... We kind of talked through this already, so mm -hmm. we're kind of sharing with you. Um, okay. I, I know that I've like seen a lot of what you're saying. You know, you were talking about how this new revival, it's like where it's not going to be like what we think we see. And it's like you know, what you were saying about the school systems and the parents coming up, you know, it's like what's happened in this nation and everything. It, it feels like the church had no say, we had no power, no influence. And, and now all of a sudden I feel like people are waking up and I feel like God is always in control and he gives us that um, strength inside of us because we have the Lord with us and we have the Holy Spirit. Um, but I've noticed even like with prayers that I feel like the Lord has given me lately, it's been amazing. Like never before, it's like, you know, he asked me and I, and I even shared on one of these that we did that um, I felt like the Lord was wanting me to pray for kids, you know, like all of these kids being trafficked or, mm -hmm. or left behind at the border or just all of this in the, in the womb, you know, all of these children. And, it, and when I, before I started praying about them, I kept seeing news article after news article, not looking for them, of the bad things happening. And it was very um, hard for me. And so I started praying for these kids. And I tell you, every day, and I'm not saying it's because of me, but it's like every day I'm seeing news articles about a new case of the kids being rescued, a new case wow. of some a, a little child being saved. And it's like, I'm not looking for these articles. And so I felt like it was the Lord showing that it's like, um, like you, your prayers matter and, and it, it's more intense than ever before, almost like a new level. And so I'm seeing, I'm like, I hear a pastor, what he's saying, it's like, I'm even seeing it in my own prayer life. Yes. You know, it's like little old me sitting at my home praying this dangerous prayer um, you know, against the enemy, and then lo and behold, I get an article. You know, hours later of a rescue happening, and I'm not seeing I'm not seeing negative stuff like I was before. And so, I, I, I'm definitely seeing an increase for those who want to believe in what God is doing. As long as you would 
be beside him, you know, not behind God, not too far ahead of him, but right beside him and just hold his hand and say, okay, God, I don't understand everything, but I'm so excited to walk this with you and just hold your hand and do what you need me to do. And I think that's what's so good about this team and this ministry is that we have people that don't care about a ministry or um, getting like our own name out there or something like that. It's all about, okay, God, I'm just wanting to hold your hand, be right beside you and do exactly what you need me to do and follow you where you need me to go. And because of that, I feel like we're seeing that blessing and we're seeing that increase and in that power and authority that the Lord is letting us go and take the ground. And so I'm, I'm definitely seeing that revival. Which is... You know, she makes a very good point here because the good Lord himself is the one that says, do you see these works that I do? You will do these works and greater works than these because I'm going to my Father. Why he's going to his Father is going to send down the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can be in every, every person who wants it, you know, to be able to partner with God and to bring these things back. She says one little old person sitting there praying dangerous prayers, well, a lot uh, Elijah, Elijah prayed, Elijah, Elijah <laughs> prayed, um, and the Bible says he had a, he had a, he, had, he was a, just like us, he had a constitution just like us, he was a, a man just like us who prayed and, and believed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. Yeah. God Almighty heard him yeah. and stopped the weather. You know, and God allowed, it wasn't Elijah stopping the weather or controlling the weather. It was God hearing the prayer of the one yeah. to change weather for thousands and thousands of people and for across miles upon miles in that whole region. That whole, he put his hand, it wouldn't let it rain for three and a half years. And he waited and the same man in faith prayed again and God heard him and, uh, and released the weather and sent the rain. So don't think it's one little old you out there and we all feel the same way. It's like, am I really making it, you know, I'm praying this dangerous prayers yeah. uh, out to, uh, against a, a, a foe that without God's protection, we don't have, we, we don't have strength in ourselves. It is God's holy protection, yeah. God's mighty strength that covers us. It's his power that, get, that he gives us to have power over all the works of the enemy. And so... Um, you know, we are, we are out there praying and we are believing God for the impossible for people. So just like one and Misty, go ahead, Misty. The key here, you know, how she was saying, God, I'm here to do exactly what you need me to do. Don't try to go. Yes. You know, you want to serve the Lord. You want to pray and do all these things, but don't try to go and just copy somebody else. Right. Like be open to him because he'll have something specific for you like for, for that day for her it was like you know he was putting on her heart heavily pray for the the trafficking pray for the children and all these situations and he might be speaking something completely different to you but if it's if he's speaking to you clearly you need to be able to um receive it you know to be, be open to receive it which is being being in a spot you need to be in which is you know being prayed up and in your word um, because he, the prayers he might need you to focus on is something completely different, but it's going to be a bigger impact because he's having her do something different. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's okay. So, um, so don't just try to, you know, Lord, you know, I know the times are rough and I see all this stuff happening and everybody's saying, you know, you know, be available and get right with you and all these things, but don't just try to hurry up and do something, you know, yes, pray all the time and, and stuff about everything but but really be sensitive to him on what he is um, guiding and directing and wanting you to focus on because it's going to be so much more impactful and there's a reason he's specifically having you you know focus on just like her you know the, the trafficking you know for me it might have been something specific for my husband or specific to something else that's going on so well that points out misty made a good point specific that god would have you do uh, how many people prayed for it not to rain for three and a half years? How many people did, God, did, the, did the Lord put on their heart to actually pray that? And the Lord does put on our heart what he wants us to pray for if we're open to it. That way we use our free choice to just basically pray what he says to pray and he can bring. We don't know why 
certain things are the way they are. One day when we get to heaven, maybe he'll reveal to us why he needed us to do it this way or go this way or that, you know, he, he, his providence steps in when he wants to, but there are times that he waits for the people's free choice to ask and then he steps in. So, you know, we'll know then why he did a certain way. But like Misty said, you know, you know, or like Elijah, how many people did God ask, uh, put on the heart to pray for the weather? One person. Somebody else might have prayed for this, the, you know, something else. And another person prayed for something else. And things were happening. But for one might be this. For one it might be that. And I feel the same way too. Oh, I don't feel. It's like I know it. I see it. I feel like specific, right now, specific prayers are being answered just like that. Mm -hmm. As, you know, before, you know, it might be something you're praying about. And you might not see it happening. Or you might... You know, I, I don't know. I just, it, it's right now, it's so different um, with with these prayers, with the, the prayers he's asking us to focus on and then being answered just like this. And I'm seeing like in my own life and, and personal and with church and people. And so it's just amazing how um, it, we're in such a different time right now that, you know, that I've not, I guess, experienced in my spiritual walk until more so now than ever. It does feel like what Pastor was saying, there's like a, like a definitely a new era, it's like a release of, I feel like God is releasing his spirit in another in a new way, I feel like, or a different way. But what's beautiful is that he wants to partner with us. Like he's the God of the universe. He can do everything. I mean, he made everything just by speaking it, like the move of his finger he could kill us. <laughs> kill us all. I probably shouldn't have said that. But what I mean is, is that, you know, he wants to partner with us and do this with us. And that, that, that's just so amazing to me. And, and he's gifted us, to Missy's point, it's like he's gifted us all so differently. Like he's made us all so different, so unique to do exactly what we need to do for this generation we're living in. It's like, you know, no one can do what you do. And so if you're trying to copy someone else, it's like, why does God want to copy? You're not anointed to do the things that are needed to do. You're, you're anointed to do what God needs you to do. And so it's just really neat that he partners with us and that he loves us and he wants us to do it together. And um, that, you know, I had something else with that too, but I forgot. But anyway, it's just so nice that, you know, he partners with us and uses our giftings in that way. And that if only we would listen, that was my point is like, if only we had ears to hear right now because of what he's doing and what he's bringing. God is bringing all of this and it's like who has ears to hear and eyes to see, let them hear and see what I'm doing. And so it's like let's come and, and, and hear what he's doing and not miss it, not get overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day stuff or not get lost. And even if you're in ministry, don't let ministry become, you know, your God. You need to make sure that God is, you're, you're following what God is asking you to do. You know, when you're at the workplace, what is he asking of you to do when you're there at the workplace? You remember, your walk with him is most important than your job or your career. What is God asking you to do while you're there, you know, at the hospital or while you're there, you know, at the reception desk, whatever it is, or while you're there at the, the schools, you know, whatever it is, God is asking you to do something. So are you listening? Are you hearing? and being obedient, so. You know, I was looking across the website at uh, some of these prophetic things that the Lord has shared in this last year, and I was I was honing in on one statement here, you know, I think Misty was saying, it's like right when, you know, we're, we're praying and God is answering right away. Well, one of the statements that were, that he gave, and I'm looking for it, but basically he was telling the ones that are listening and ones that are basically obeying and want to live after him, ask whatever you want and I will do it for you. Uh, be patient, you are mine. Oh, here it is. This one is from, it's entitled Hold On. It's from April 16th. And down it says, uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. Be patient, you are mine, and I am yours. Ask whatever you want from me, and it will be yours. And so, uh, and we, we actually, in stuff like this, you should be able to find it in the scripture somewhere. And the Bible says that he gives us the desires of our heart. And Jesus said, up to this time, you've never, you've not asked anything in my name, but now ask basically everything in my name, and the Father will give it to you, and that will bring glory and honor to me. And I was thinking about that this morning, about how 
Him answering prayers brings glory and honor to His name. And it's because He has, what Jesus did for us on the cross and, and be able to provide um, that uh, for, uh, forgiveness of sin. But even what I was praying this morning was, uh, you know, I wanted to go in to see the, it's like, I need your robe of righteousness, you know, because we don't have anything good in, in, in ourselves and I, just it, without his covering. It's like God said, had to send God the son to die so that we can be right with God. And then God's spirit has to help us pray to God. It, it's him all the way around us helping yeah. us. It takes God the spirit to pray to God the father. But we can't even go to God the Father without God the Son covering us with God's righteous robe. Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> we're in ourselves, that's why the Bible says if you're going to boast, boast in what the Lord has done. Boast yes, in the amen. Lord. It's like, you know, so when I was praying this morning, it's like, God, I want to I mean, wear that robe of righteousness, dear God. Thank you for the robe of righteousness that I can come in there and pray. And, you know, you... You, we ask in the fall, in, in Jesus' name for something, and somehow that brings glory to God. And I was thinking about that this morning during all of this re, this revival uh, uh, topic, and it's like because of what the Father has done through the Son and the Holy Spirit helping to woo us back, that we're in a place that we're cog consciously, cognitive and consciously believing and knowing to go to speak to our God in prayer in the name of Jesus, which is the winning name, that the name is above all names, and that God's getting glory because the work that he did with his son and with the spirit, it's bringing fruit, which is us. We're the fruit that has been transformed. And when we're all born in a sin, into sinful, the sinful nature, and you know, for us to be in the world and to win our fight with Satan. I think Jude, is it Jude or, or uh, John 3 or one of those in that area says, Father, uh, men, you have won your fight with Satan. And what is the fight with Satan that we win? I'm not talking about temptation. That's, that's a kind of a different thing. It's that those who have called upon the name of the Lord have won their fight with Satan because it's all about uh, if Satan can deceive the world and and deceive people and cover them that there is no or, you know with the with the the atheistic or the you know there's there's no God or or it's the Big Bang or it's 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 some fat man at the beginning at the front of a, a Chinese restaurant or something like that you know that's what it's all about you know it's not the one true God so you know when we're at a place that we can call upon the name of the Lord it's like Father. I would come to you, and, and God, I just want to come to you, and I'm going to ask you in Jesus' name for help with trafficking. Or, God, can you help me pay a bill? I mean, it, if to him, it's the point that we're, we're, we've come to a place where we can believe that God the Father will hear us yes. because we're praying in the name of Jesus, and because that's who we are, it brings glory to God. And, of course, he gives it. You know, the fight is already, it's like, you know, uh, an illustration that uh, somebody gave us a long time ago about when we ask for something. It's like somebody bringing you a Christmas present or a, a birthday present. They got this beautiful box that's wrapped up. It's got the, the paper folded just right and taped. You know, those people who can wrap a present and make it look like, it's like, I don't even want to open that thing. It's not so pretty. You know, it's got the big no, bow like on that. there. And, yeah, I don't either. It's like, if I get some newspaper, I'll wrap this up, and, you know, whatever. But um, it's something so beautiful and the wrapping paper and it's just gorgeous. And it's like, wow, like sh like a some sh a store, you know, display or something. And then we, you know, we, we peel it open and we, we unwrap it carefully and we open up the box and we reach in and it's this priceless, wonderful thing, you know, that we, we need and want. And, and then for us to take that and then ask the person who gave it to us, um, would it be okay if, if I have the bow? Um, would it be okay if, if could, could, you, could I have the wrapping paper? And it's like, yeah, you already got the best. This other stuff, sure, you have wrapping paper. No problem. That's kind of like we, we've already accepted Jesus Christ. As, he's the gift. Yeah. And if we say, may I have the wrapping paper, Lord, too, or may I have the ribbon, too, all of those are, are it's, 
we've already got the best is what we're putting in. So answer prayer in this new time of revival. God is looking for people who will believe him and that are willing to say, God, here I am. I want to be a part of this. And, and if you are, then he will work through you. Uh, Pastor Alex has taken on a whole new dimension in his life. And, you know, I think he's probably been asking for, for more and me asking for God to work in. There's just one pray, answer prayer right there. And God orchestrating events, world history events to bring him to a place. I mean, you didn't think about that. The whole COVID could have been brought about just so you can get to this place right here. I mean, our, <laughs> oh, it's your fault. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, uh, look at all the things that God has, I mean, if, if this wouldn't happen, then we wouldn't be here, but yet some, you know, God works through, you know, works out all things for good, yeah. you know, even what the enemy tries to throw at us. And so, uh, anyway, uh, let's get to a couple of quick little things and then we're probably going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, what is um, what are his clear and perfect instructions for this revival? What is what's some big rock things that we feel like that this this new revival this unlike anything that has been seen so far? And actually, I think August says something about that that's that's ne nothing like this has ever been seen before. Um, he's bringing us to a place that it's a time of peace and prosperity. That's what it was that the world has never previously known. And so it is not the same as it was before. So what are some of the things that, you know, are important to him for us to know during this time of revival that, number one, he is with us. We're seeing it by the answer prayer, praying a prayer, and then all of a sudden little things pop up about the thing you just prayed for. Coincidence? No, no, not at all. Uh, seeing how prayer is being answered and, and knowing that, you know, just to walk in your calling. Coincidence? That happens to be some of the same themes? No, not at all. God wants people to remember that He is alive. He is with us. Um, secondly is um, that, he's, that God is standing with the righteous. And He had me add this, not with the perfect, but with the righteous. You know, we, the Bible says, I, it may be a, again in one of the Johns, no, uh, maybe he, uh, anyway, that we aim for perfection, you know, because if we're not aiming at nothing, we've heard this before, if you're not aiming at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. Mm -hmm. So God has us aim at something, which is, you know, kind of keep, continue to work on our, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, that's a godly pursuit to work out our, our, our salvation with fear and trembling. And, you know, that's kind of after we've received salvation, which is a free gift. We can work out our, our, our calling, work out our salvation. But God understands that we are not perfect. And, you know, but we don't just, we're not sloppy either. We don't just, well, I'm, I'm not perfect. I can just live in your way. We're not going to talk about that. No, there's a certain heartbeat that God is looking for um, that it's, it's, a, it's a right heart, not just right behavior. Behavior can be trained, hard, hard to, hard to bring a heart into that certain little place that's very sweet to God, where He looks at us like when we think about the kids when they're having a, a, a acute attitude and they're trying to they're trying to be obedient, they're trying to do their thing, but yet they're knocking over water and doing all you know doing all this stuff. It's like, but their their heart is in their kid like way is. Uh, I was going to say respectful, but I think most parents understand what I'm saying. Yes. You know, um, that it's like, you know what, we're, we're with them, you know, and, and stuff. Anyway, so. And you can hear them right now. Yeah, yeah they're in the background right here. <laughs> they're, they're um, I think we'll, we'll close with some of this on this, uh, this revival. Uh, the world is, is being shown that God is. Yes. That he can do whatever he wants to do. Yes. Really, whenever he wants to do it. And that the evil and wickedness, and I, I kind of made this little side note, according to what the Word says is evil and wickedness, people have to see that that does get dealt with. Yeah. You know, unre unrepentant. If you're out there and you've turned your life over to Jesus Christ and you repented, he has thrown your sins as far away from the east as to the west. And God doesn't want you to harp on your old life. 
especially if, you've, if you're all in. Don't keep going back there. The uh, Lord told me many times in those coming, coming out of the world, coming into, you know, don't think about all that stuff anymore. Don't think about that anymore. You know, put that out of your head. Don't allow the enemy to keep bringing it up because what does it do? It calls you to go lay around in a mopey state, but, you know. So anyway, so what does the word say is wicked and evil? And I was talking with Pastor Alex about this. It's like, we see this, what the what some people say is uh, evil, they're saying is good. Mm-hmm. And what what they say is good is now evil. People speaking about biblical values, that's evil, wicked, we should do away with those people. No, God is saying here that he wants people to understand what his word says about evil and wickedness will get dealt with. And what man says evil and wicked, you know, that's a whole different story. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, that he's if he doesn't deal with some of this stuff, people won't know that there really is a judgment at the end time. Yeah. That's why he dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah, and that was still a, a, a heap of, as a warning to the rest of the world that judgment does come. That's also why we need to stay really close to him so that we're not deceived because, you know, if the world's saying this is good and it's really not good and under God's standards and, and law and morals and we need to really focus on God and let him be the one to show you and guide you instead of being, mm-hmm. you know, all this other junk is poured poured into you that makes you, you know, if you're seeing it and you're hearing it and it's constant, so if you're not very strong spiritually, it might make you question, so. Pastor Alex, uh, you had a couple of thoughts about church going forward as far as actual Church Alive, Church Alive event. And I just, what are some things that you'd like to share with folks that we're kind of working on in the background and they might be interested in, possibly even contacting you? Or, well, it's um, it goes along with what, what we're talking about right now with, with the revival. It, uh, you know, this I strongly believe that we are entering the final revival before the harvest and um it's it's going to be a time of peace and prosperity and um i I think folks in the world uh, even the world you know who don't believe because of the church they're going to prosper as well in a way they're going to see peace and and an increase in their lives um and that's a blessing but also kind of a scary thing as well because uh People are going to be going about their lives and their blessing and their peace and their prosperity till the very end. And for some folks, that's going to be, you know, that time is going to end and we're going to be with the Lord. And, and for everybody else, it's going to be a big shock. Yeah. Uh, but it, as far as, you know, the direction of, you, you know, Church Alive as a church, you know, we're releasing all this information right now to the Internet, you, you know, to the airways. We're trying to make it free and readily available to anybody who, who wants it, to anybody who wants to be a part. Um, and, you know, God's word does say that he's He's not coming back until every single person has had an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And we live in a time where you can go to the most desolate places on the planet um, and, and there's nothing comical about the, their situations, but, but we see the the migrations coming up out, out of South and Central America uh, up to our our borders here in the south of the states and they got nothing but the clothes on their back and whoa there's there's an iPhone <laughs> they're they're holding a an Android or, or something you know you, you're going to the the farmer you know hoard, uh, uh, herding his goats sheep wherever in the fields of Africa and you know he's got his walking stick and it looks like he's still living in the old testament but oh, out comes the phone it, it, you know and so yes I, I, it's funny but we can literally reach the last corners of the world uh with the technology that we have today and i believe the lord is letting us use it and so we are um prayerfully considering um how the Lord would like us to proceed uh, with doing church um, and, and making it available in such a way for people who maybe can't find a church, a physical church home in the place where they're at, maybe because they are in a third world country and it's just, they 
physically cannot find a place or maybe you're living in such a place where you're surrounded by churches but um maybe they're not speaking the truth uh you, you know we're the dfw metroplex is just down the road for, from us and it's the bible belt and um it feels like there's a church on almost every corner but um it's interesting driving down the highway uh, some of the signage on even some of the mega churches is quite quite shocking. Um, feels like they're going the way of the world and, and and not the way of the Lord at all. And so, even though you may be surrounded by churches and you're you're finding, you're thinking, you know, I I can, I'm struggling to find a place that is in line with what I believe the Lord is speaking to my heart. Um, we want to be a resource uh, for you, and so we are we're fleshing out the details on on how that is going to look like, and, and what we were talking about here. You know, uh, I, I know a lot of you folks who are good students of the Bible are thinking, "Well, Paul said, don't give up meeting together." You know, and so we want to make sure that we're not giving up meeting together, and that we're setting, even though we're on an online environment. How can we create the opportunity in a home group setting for every for folks to continue <laughs> meeting together? And, and some of you, um, not very many people are called to be pastors and teachers, but some are given to the gifts of hospitality and, and love and just providing, you, you know, and some of you are going to have the opportunity to step up and just be a host for folks, for friends and for family to gather in your home and find a safe place to meet where a safe, love warming environment. You see that statement on the front of our website that is going to remain there. It provide that safe, loving, warming environment for then us to be able to come and, and uh, pour, pour in and then down the line, it, it is our goal to release more teaching and an opportunity for you to also have have that oversight like we were discussing you know you can't not be under some authority right. and, and so we're working out ways to have oversight and, and a place of authority for everybody that comes under this umbrella and so there's going to be more resources and changes coming soon that we're very excited about but like I said this I, I believe that this is the end times revival and, and so the gateways to heaven are open and they're going to be easily accessible yes. um and at the same time it, it is going to still be difficult to keep the faith because we're living in times where it what we hold to be true is not popular anymore mm -hmm. um and you're not going to be just attacked by the world but you will be attacked by who you've considered to be fellow brothers and Christians in the faith, but they're, they've are they stopped listening to the Holy Spirit a long time ago, and yeah. they will attack you for speaking the truth. And so yeah. we we just are always praying. We're all, always wanting to uh, make sure that we're speaking what the Lord is speaking, and so we're just releasing that to the world. And if you want it, it's free. Come and take it. Uh, and one of the uh, lessons on the host kind of home that Pastor Alex will be doing for it's just kind of a little teaching nugget is about the uh, Mary and Martha and Jesus story about you know one was providing the host environment and then um, waiting for instructions from the, the teacher basically and so uh, that would be a great example of getting together in homes and having the teacher there, but somebody else maybe cooking and cleaning and, and other people, you know. So anyway, um, I hope that uh, this helped you out tonight. And our hope is that, you know, some way, somehow that you would allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, that you would hear what you need, that the Lord wants you to hear tonight. Um, there is a lot of, there's a lot of great things that the Lord is doing all around the earth. It is not all gloom and doom. He is up to some very, big things that many generations might have loved to have seen yes. uh, and that we're alive to see it um, here in our lifetime. And he chose us, uh, the, 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 the people that are here, to be able to see some of these things. And so anyway, we're going to pray and then we're going to uh, let you go. And, and if you want to contact us, there's all kinds of con ways to contact us. Let us know how we can uh, help you, serve you, uh, point you in the right direction if we don't know. And so... 
why don't we pray? Uh, I'm going to ask Miss Rachel to, to uh, jump start the prayer, and then uh, I'll end up wrapping it up. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this evening, God, and thank you for our pastor and and um, our pastors and, and my, my awesome husband. Father, thank you for this team. And Father, I just pray your blessing on what we're doing, God. I pray for, I thank you for your anointing, for what you're asking us to go into. And I thank you for every person online watching this, God. And Lord, I just pray that you put the seed in their heart to listen, to be obedient to what you're speaking, to be on the move with you, Jesus, to be on this wavelength that you're this, you know, wavelength that, that you're sending out, God, help them be in tune to that, God. Help them, Lord, not to compromise, Father God, in their faith because it's easier to walk that way, God. Help them to be strong, God, right now, like never before. And Lord, I just pray strength over your people right now. Lord, I, I pray a release of your strength, Father, for them to stand tall and hold on and wear that full armor of God like you have meant it to be worn, God. And I pray, Father, that they wear the robe of righteousness, like Pastor was saying, wear the robe of righteousness, Lord. Help them to wear that robe, God, and just be in your presence, God, and do things unto you, Jesus, and let you be Lord of their life once again, Father. And I pray for anyone who's compromised or has left the faith, God, or who wants to come back, Lord, but they're hearing something tonight that is lighting up their ears, hearing something tonight that's lighting up their heart, God. Lord, I just pray you invade that space right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you pour over them, God. Show them that revelation right now that you're showing all of us, God. Give them insight to what you're doing, God, and help them to know that you are Lord of Lord and King of all kings, Lord, and that you are their Father, and you are their Papa Daddy, God, and that, that, that you are here for them, Jesus. You're, you're here to rescue them out of that darkness and bring him into light, God. And so I just pray that they receive that today, Father God, and they're strong pillars, God, and they choose a higher way, God, your way, Jesus, the only way, Father. And I pray you empower your people, God. I pray you empower your church right now, God. Empower your church and make them strong and anointed for the call that you have asked this generation, this church to do, God. And I pray you, you anoint our hands, God, and you anoint our feet, God, and you anoint our mouth, God, and you anoint our ears, God, to hear and to see and to do what you need us to do, God. Help us to be awake, God. Help us to be alive, God. Help us to be celebrating, God, because this is a celebration, Father. This is not a time of gloom and doom, like Pastor said. This is a celebration. Father, you're bringing in the celebration. You're bringing in the harvest. You're saying, let's come and prepare. Let us be joyful as we prepare for the harvest that I'm bringing in. Let us celebrate with celebration and the joy of the Almighty Lord. Come into your heart and celebrate, for we are preparing a way for the harvest to come. I'm preparing a way for the harvest to come, my people. I am here to stay. I am your King of kings and Lord of lords, and I have come and I have prepared the table. Will you come and eat with me? Me? Will you come and dine with me? Will you come and harvest with me? Will you be part of the vine? Will you be fruit that I can plant? Will you be the tree that I can plant to harvest and produce much fruit? I am your king. I am your God. Will you walk with me? Will you talk with me like Adam? Will you talk with me in the garden, in the intimate place, in that place that no one else knows, the secret place? Will you come with me? Will you hear my heart? Will you hear my desire for you, my child? Will you come and will you listen? Will you be obedient to my call? Will you be a David? Will you be like Jesus who does unto the Father? Will you be like Moses who says, I will go even though there's death and destruction that may come? Will you be Aaron who speaks the words of, the, of, of God, the Almighty? Will you be these prophets? Will you be the teachers? Will you be the apostles? Will you be the Elijahs? Will you come with me and dine with me, says the Lord? And so, Father, I just thank you for your word, God, just now, Father. And I just thank you and I pray you release it over your people. Or let them receive it and let their hearts be softened and never hardened yes. to your word, God, in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, Father, we, we thank you again. We bless you again. We honor you again. There is nobody like you in all the universe, in the seen world and the unseen world. There's nobody like you. And we love you and we look forward to serving you all of our days. 
In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Well, we hope that you enjoyed that today. I hope that the Lord God was able to speak to you today and begin moving in your life, begin moving in your heart. Perhaps you've been away from the Lord. Perhaps just depression has overtaken you. Perhaps maybe the spirit of condemnation just seems to be always before you and you just want to reconnect with the Lord God. You want to reconnect to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, today, don't wait. He is here. He's available. He is waiting to reconnect with you, you know. And so in just a moment, I'll have my associate pastor come up again and begin leading you in a, in a special prayer uh, to invite Jesus back in your heart and um, if, you, if you've already invited him in your heart, it's really a, a rededication to following after him. Listen, it's only too late when you quit breathing. When you quit breathing and leave this world, that's when it's too late. That's when it's too late to rededicate. That's when it's too late to call upon the name of the Lord. Your time is over at that point. Don't wait. Why? We can clearly see God moving. We clearly understand that he is. And we clearly understand that Jesus Christ came for you and I. That's love and, and he wants to invite you in on that. So in just a moment I'll have my associate pastor come up. Before we go, before I start praying, I will say I'm going to be airing some of the other prophetic messages, those special prophetic messages I've done before. This week there's going to be a big blast all across Facebook, all across um, the platforms that we can to put it out because all of that prophetic words that are being spoken and being spoken by the other pro prophetic offices um, it's coming to a head. And as long as those things are not fulfilled, they're in play. And so when you see those things, or if you see these things, would you help us to get the word out? We need people to get in on this before time's up. God's rewarding. God has rewards in his hands. God wants to bless people. But if they don't know and didn't hear, they can't believe and, and get the reward, okay? And so simple as that. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the living one, our living hope, who, has, who lives in the eternity of the eternities. God, you are, you are the one. You are the holy one. You are the magnificent one. You are the great I am. You, God, can do anything, and you do such miraculous things in front of us, God. You have no reason to lie to us. You're not a man that you should lie to us about anything. You speak truth. And God, when you say something, when you decide something, it's going to happen. And there's no power in hell that's going to keep you from doing what you said you're going to do. And so, God, I ask you to allow your spirit to continue to be released all over this world that belongs to you, God. Continue to release hosts, the host of heaven, dear God, the angelic army onto earth. God, I ask you to, to send them to every corner of this earth all over the United States, send these warring spirits, these angelic hosts, dear God, that are assigned to those that are receiving salvation to pick us up, to lift us up, to help us to grab on and believe you, God. Right here in this age, a lot of generations would have loved to see what we're seeing and, and, and didn't, and here we are. God, you're saving America, dear God. You're saving and thus the world, dear God, for another season, for another season in time. And, and i we probably all know probably going to be the, the last season in our history and we get to be alive. Jesus, we love you. You are Lord. You are Savior. You are friend. You are our God. We bless you, Almighty. We praise you, Almighty. All the praise goes to you because of what you have done and what you do and because simply you are God. We love you in Jesus' name. Here's my associate pastor. Thank you for joining us for the service this morning. If you've been feeling in your heart that you would like to give your heart to Jesus Christ, I want to urge you not to delay a moment longer. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till later. Let's do it right now. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. So again, don't wait. God made a way for you to never have to be separated from him. Sin is what causes that separation in our lives, but he sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to live that perfect life that none of us ever could so that we would never have to spend another moment without him. We are God's children. He looks at us as his children and he does not want to be away from you. And so if you would like to begin your journey knowing God, 
accepting Jesus Christ into your heart, we're going to make it very easy for you. I'm going to say a prayer right now. And if you would just repeat after me, it doesn't matter where you are, repeat after me and let's accept Jesus Christ into our hearts together. Let's begin this journey with him together. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth and living a perfect life and dying on the cross for me, for my sins, for my mistakes. Thank you for taking all of that on your shoulders so that I could be forgiven and have eternal life. And Jesus, I may not know much about you, but I want to spend the rest of my life getting to know you better. I accept you into my heart and I pray from this day forward that you help me live my life not for myself but for you alone and I give myself to you completely and I thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I'm so excited for anybody who just prayed that prayer with me. This is a lifelong commitment. We may not get it right, but that's what the grace of Jesus Christ is for. And we're excited for you. And so if you need prayer, if you would like to just let us know that you prayed that prayer with us this morning, please look below the video on our Church Alive website. There's a connect card. Fill that out if you would. If you would like us to send you some reading material, some helpful information to get you started on your walk, also please just let us know. Thank you again for joining us this morning. We're excited to get to walk this walk with you. Wow, what an amazing service today. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful week. Yeah.